2 Samuel chapter 3. There followed a long war between the house of Saul and the house of David, in which David grew ever stronger, but the house of Saul ever weaker. Sons born in Hebron. Sons were born to David in Hebron, his firstborn, Amnon, of Ahinoam from Jezreel. The second, Chilab, of Abigail the wife of Nabal of Carmel, the third, Absalom, son of Makkah, who was the daughter of Talma, king of Geshur. The fourth, Adonijah, son of Hajith, the fifth, Shephesha, son of Abidal. And the sixth, Ithrim, by David's wife Eglah. These were born to David in Hebron. Ishbal and Abner quarrel. During the war between the house of Saul and the house of David, Abner was gaining power in the house of Saul. Now Saul had had a concubine, Rispa, the daughter of Aiah. And Ishbal, son of Saul, said to Abner, Why have you slept with my father's concubine? Enraged at the words of Ishbal, Abner said, Am I a dog's head from Judah? As of today, I have been loyal to the house of Saul your father, to his brothers and his friends, and I have kept you out of David's clutches, and today you charge me with a crime involving a woman. May God do thus to Abner, and more, if I do not carry out for David what the Lord swore to him. That is, take away the kingdom from the house of Saul and establish the throne of David over Israel as well as Judah, from Dan to Beersheba. Ishbal was no longer able to say a word to Abner, he feared him so. Abner and David reconciled. Then Abner sent messengers to David in Talam, where he was at the moment, to say, Make a covenant with me, and you have me on your side, to bring all Israel over to you. He replied, Good, I will make a covenant with you. But one thing I require of you. You must not appear before me unless you bring back Michael, Saul's daughter, when you come to present yourself to me. At the same time David sent messengers to Ishbal, son of Saul, to say, Give me my wife Michael, whom I betrothed by paying a hundred Philistine foreskins. Ishbal sent for her and took her away from her husband Paltiel, son of Latish, who followed her weeping as far as Bahurim. But Abner said to him, Go back. So he turned back. Abner then had a word with the elders of Israel, For some time you have been wanting David as your king. Now take action, for the Lord has said of David, By David my servant I will save my people Israel from the power of the Philistines and from the power of all their enemies. Abner also spoke with Benjamin, and then went to speak with David in Hebron concerning all that would be agreeable to Israel and to the whole house of Benjamin. When Abner, accompanied by twenty men, came to David in Hebron, David prepared a feast for Abner and for the men who were with him. Then Abner said to David, I will now go to assemble all Israel for my lord the king, that they may make a covenant with you, you will then be king over all whom you wish to rule. So David let Abner go on his way in peace. Death of Abner Just then David's servants and Job were coming in from an expedition, bringing much plunder with them. Abner, having been dismissed by David, was no longer with him in Hebron but had gone on his way in peace. When Job and the whole force he had with him arrived, he was informed, Abner, son of Nah, came to David, and he let him go on his way in peace. So Job went to the king and said, What have you done? Abner came to you. Why did you let him get away? Don't you know Abner? He came to trick you, to learn your comings and goings, to learn everything you do. Job then left David and sent messengers after Abner to bring him back from the cistern of Sirah, but David did not know. When Abner returned to Hebron, Job took him aside within the city gate to speak with him privately. There he stabbed him in the abdomen, and he died for the blood of Asahel, Job's brother. Later David heard of it and said, Before the Lord, I and my kingdom are forever innocent. May the blood of Abner, son of Nah, be on the head of Job and all his family. May Job's family never be without one suffering from a discharge, or one with a skin disease, or a man who holds the distaff, or one falling by the sword, or one in need of food. 
Job and Abishai his brother had been lying in wait for Abner because he killed Asahel their brother in battle at Gibeon. David mourns Abner. Then David said to Job and to all the people who were with him, Tear your garments, put on sackcloth, and mourn over Abner. King David himself followed the bier. When they had buried Abner in Hebron, the king wept aloud at the grave of Abner, and all the people wept. And the king sang this lament over Abner. Should Abner have died like a fool? Your hands were not bound with chains. Nor your feet placed in fetters. As one falls before the wicked, you fell. And all the people continued to weep for him. Then they went to console David with food while it was still day. But David swore, May God do thus to me, and more, if before the sun goes down I eat bread or anything else. All the people noted this with approval, just as everything the king did met with their approval. So on that day all the people and all Israel came to know that it was not the king's doing that Abner, son of Nah, was put to death. The king then said to his servants, Do you not know that a prince, a great man, has fallen today in Israel? 39. Although I am the anointed king, I am weak this day, and these men, the sons of Zeruiah, are too ruthless for me. May the Lord repay the evildoer in accordance with his evil deed.